Right, I've got all the nuts and bolts that hold the cases together undone and removed now and I think I'm ready to try splitting the cases. So, sort of live, shall we go for splitting the cases and see if uh, we see anything of interest? This is actually um, obviously not staged, I haven't had these cases apart before. Here they come. Well, they're coming apart quite nicely anyway. Seem to be so far. Got that far and hang on, hang on. I can see what's wrong here. Right. Watch out for when the conrods are laying forwards like that, they can uh, become entangled with the two front studs in the crankcase and stop the crankcase halves separating any further. Here we go. We're in. I'll just uh, wipe my hands. We can take a look and see that although it's cracked, that bridge piece is holding. So I'm pretty sure. Let's turn it over and have a look at that side of it if we can. Get my torch on it. Sorry about the gloom. There's a crack there on the underside as well. Just move the light away a little. It'll be easier to see. This torch is a bit bright. There we are. It's in, it's still in place and the um, stud hole still lines up with the other half so I think I'll go and ask an alloy welder I know who's very good to just sort of V out those cracks there's another one over there which we've seen these from above as well I'm sure one good whack with the hammer and that would come off but uh, as it's holding if possible I think we can get that V'd out and welded up and that'll be okay so uh, not a great worry that and obviously I'll just have to helicoil the damaged stud hole in the crankcase mouth and I think the crankcases should be good to go again so next up should just be a matter of me sliding the crank out of there put the camera back down here a minute I'll get this drive side case out of our way for a moment and uh, pull the crank out, shall we, and have a look. There it is. And the crank case. Now obviously, there's a little spring and a disc from the crankcase breather that engages with this end of the camshaft that will or should be in the drive side case, so I'll look out for them and pick them out and put them somewhere safe. There's the time inside bush. That actually looks like a genuine article and not a cheap imitation. Because the uh, cheap imitations have got a more brass sort of like appearance to them. Um, what have we got there? Oh! But our end float, oh, this is interesting, this is, um, usually, more often than not, you get a thrust washer in there, although there are two types of time inside bush, I'll have to check, but usually the time inside bush goes in and more often than not you get like a sort of rather flat uh, thrust washer with a coppery coloured uh, bearing face on it that fits in there. Uh, we haven't got one in this. There was end float. It doesn't come out with the crank. It's not on the end of the crank. 
but I'll have to sort of go looking into the um, <clears throat> the engine number and all sorts of things and check whether this was actually supposed to have that uh, thrust washer or not. So either that or the um, I don't know. I was going to say perhaps the time inside bearing wasn't fully home the bush, but it appears to be. But I'll make sure that I know what I've got and what I should have and make sure that they are correct when it goes back together as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove the conrods from the crank assembly and get the uh, drive side main bearing in a race off the crank, get the sludge trap out, have a look at that and have the crank stripped bare ready to go up to Aerom for checking and measuring and see uh, what if anything can be done with it. And hopefully then we have reached the turning point and we can start thinking about getting some bits and pieces in and hopefully putting this thing back together again properly.